My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. And we are back again. We did tell you there would be a lot more of season five of Great Canadian Baking Show content coming your way. Hell yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent. <laughs> oh. Welcome aboard. Have you ever had such a classy intro as that? <laughs> It was, it was hot. Yeah. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's what we're here for. It's it's all the, all the class. Yes. Well, at least it's not kangaroo dinner or something like that. <laughs> oh, kangaroo is quite nice. Anyway, um, <laughs> so when they give you crocodile, like crocodile is disappointing. Like it just, I don't know. It's kind of like bad calamari. That's that's all I've ever seen. That's the, that's the best description I've ever heard. Crocodile is bad calamari. Anyway, we need to get back to the more important things, which is, you know, we had a classy introduction for a very classy baker. Oh, yes. It is an absolute joy to finally have you on. And congratulations, obviously, on your stunning victory. Thank you so much. It was an unexpected victory, but I'll take it. No, and well deserved. It was well deserved. And it was Thank one you. of those, it was one of those things where, and we said all the way through on the podcast as, as we went through we could see where you were going every week. There was a clear form. There was a clear identity. And again, we'll come back to your instructions and your level of detail on that shortly. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we said consistently was that you either had a really big hit or it would just sort of go off, but it wouldn't ever go to the point of absolute disaster. And it was like, if Vincent can consistently nail this, he'll come very close to winning the whole thing. And it felt- not winning the whole thing. Yeah, and it felt like- (laughs) The finale and that last cake in particular, we're going to start with the journey to elegance. Because that was amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, you know, it's a funny thing. I never consider my bakes to be amazing. Um, mm. I just do what I do. And you sort of get so used to a certain level or a certain aesthetic that you don't really see it anymore. And when I saw, you know, um, Steve, have his uh built his bee cake his queen bee cake mm. i was just like in awe of that because it's like i could never do that um as hard as i would try i could copy it now <laughs> <laughs> I, could probably, I could probably make it really clean and uh, but i would never have that joy and freedom that you know steve brings to the tent as uh in his bakes then you know you look at stuff like uh anything that amy did mm-hmm. um, <laughs> i could never do that but I have, like I said, I have my own lane and I, I'm comfortable in it. And, uh, and I just, you know, that's where I live and yeah. it's okay. You know, we all have our own lane and it's, and it's totally good. Absolutely. I think when we were discussing the, the finale, we were like, you know, it's like watching three different um, styles of artists compete, you, you know, like um, Amy's this like flavor queen. Like she actually is. Uh, uh, she's the one person I will happily use that <laughs> word for because her her flavor profiles are amazing. And then she comes up with this like you know execution that's so intricate and detailed and on point. And you got Steve who really embodies the whimsy of the tent. You know, <laughs> like just um, you know carefree and but it it's it's kind of like that. Like I just think of the Weasley house, you know, like it's <laughs> it's from Harry Potter. If people want, need that kind of where it's just magical and wonderful and you wouldn't have it any other way. And it's just beautiful to behold. And then you come in as this kind of like, you like the posh spice of, of the tent, you know, <laughs> like the little black dress, still <laughs> elegance, but still wow. You know, like anytime Victoria Beckham actually does anything <laughs> That's not just stand there, look beautiful. It's wow. But you've got more than more substance than Victoria Beckham. And that was a really bad analogy. And Chris is looking at me, why did you pick? Why did you pick Victoria Beckham? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> where you were going with that was very clean. Was... <laughs> it's the, the amount of the amount of when we're talking elegance, it's that clean mm. line, which is your sort of hallmark. And that's what you talked about a lot in there. Um, mm. how did that sort of perfect quest for sort of perfection and clean lines and everything developed in your baking uh well i'm a i'm a graphic designer by trade Mm -hmm. and um, i've always been a corporate designer a corporate graphic designer so uh everything was always very clean very square very tight um no sort of you know fruit loops on you know nipple rings (laughs) (laughs) not with that that attitude (laughs) So everything was very square and, and tight corners and stuff like that. So 
um, it was just natural for me to sort of move into that with my baking as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was saying, that cake, uh, that journey, um, it started out with how I wanted to sort of say, this is who I was when I was a teenager. This is who I was as a 30 something and this is who I am now. So um, when I was a teenager into my twenties, I did a lot of tray bakes and uh, they were you know, delicious and people enjoyed them, but you know, they were nothing to look at. They were tray bakes, <laughs> Lemon squares, coffee cakes, things like that, you know, um, lazy daisy cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved into um, just a little bit of uh, cakes and bunt cakes and things like that, where you had a little more decoration and, you know, a little more, you know, wow factor. Mm -hmm. And then um, when the Great Canadian Baking Show came along, the, uh, it was like, okay, if I ever want to be on this show, I need to know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time and a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> to make a whole bunch of different things. And, um, and I just wanted to broaden my, my knowledge of uh, baking across the board from pastries to French pastries to... Uh, bread to cakes to tarts to everything and um, and you need to know that to get on the show uh, we all have specialties hmm. uh, my specialty is probably cakes yeah. and um, they're my celebratory kind of like you know signature item so um, given that um, it's all good you know um, when I had a cake challenge, it was like, great, a cake challenge. But then I had, you know, bread week and pie week. It was just like, oh my gosh, you know, what are we going to do here, right? And hopefully I'm just better than the last person in the tent. <laughs> and and for, for me, for me personally, your, your, your greatest triumph and your greatest success inside the pavilion, as we call it, is in that grand final and it's in that journey to elegance cake. And I mentioned it to you before we, we started and I refer of course to the creme caramel. Now, <laughs> the reason it's your greatest triumph is you, you helped heal a broken judge <laughs> in poor Bruno who, who suffered the indignity of creme caramel uh, as a technical a couple of seasons ago. <laughs> and I don't think it ever fully recovered. So for him to not only go, this is competent, but to say this, would be not out of place in Paris. That is, first of all, one of the highest compliments you can receive at the best of times. But secondly, it shows healing. And I'm I'm so pleased for Bruno that you came along and made him whole again. You know, I have to uh, thank you guys uh, for bringing that to my attention because I had no idea. I never knew anything about this current Carmel thing <laughs> until I heard it on your show. Oh. And uh, if I knew about it prior to that, <laughs> I don't think I would have done it. <laughs> so glad and, that you. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, oh, creme caramel, whatever. You know, you just whip a creme caramel. How how difficult is it, right? Because I make creme caramel all the time. So when you guys are talking about this creme caramel from season whatever three or whatever it was, I'm like, what in the hell are they talking about? <laughs> and then then there was like, but there was chatter uh, uh, outside of the tent about. Mm -hmm. oh, Make it creme caramel. You think it creme caramel? It's like what the hell? What the You're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just see a, a bunch of like um like like people just suddenly start you know like bringing some ancillary support for Bruno as you <laughs> creme caramel? Suddenly there's case. suddenly there's extra cameras appearing around your bench. <laughs> no idea what's going on, and you're like, why are they? Why are the producers all standing around me? <laughs> It was something like that. I felt that, I felt that was the case. Yeah. You're like, it's just the top of my cake. There's so much more. I just imagine <laughs> there's an emergency <laughs> bottle of cognac that has to come out <laughs> in case of emergency. <laughs> so I have to go back and actually watch that episode uh, to see what everybody's talking about. But I'm yeah. so glad we didn't know about it beforehand. <laughs> It would, yeah, that would have automatically caused the nerves. And again, I will recommend, much like with the, much like with the lemon, and we said that Bruno's facial reaction with the lemon was priceless. Bruno's reaction when he walks back into the pavilion post creme caramel is possibly the best reaction in the history of Bake Off. So I look forward to you seeing it because <laughs> it's brilliant. And you will get there will be this shutter go through going, I can't believe I did that. But that also goes back to a point we made 
all the way through the season. We said this to Steve last week as well, which is that this season's bakers, there are a lot of pressure points that appear traditionally in all forms of bake-off. And one of the things that was a bit of a theme this year was it would appear in Canadian and the bakers would just do it straight away and there'd be no pressure point whatsoever. So there, there's always, oh, they've got to put extra gelatin in a dish. Oh, what's going to go? Oh, no, it worked. Okay. <laughs> They're going to make some shoe and this could be, a, oh, no, they just all made shoe. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and it was one of these things where I just thought this season was like a big flex. <laughs> the entire yeah. season. And all of that, what it shows is the quality of the bakers just continues to go up. Is, is that what yeah. you found when, when you were in there? Uh, yeah, I mean... Not to, you know, put anything by any of the other bakers from past seasons, but the bakers in this season, and from what I've heard online, as well as on pod, other your podcasts, and as well as other podcasts, and from friends and family and, and everyone, is that, my God, the, the quality of bakers this year, uh, the season five, has been incredible. Like, ev- everybody's so high level. And... I completely agree. Um, anybody could have won that mm. this season. Anybody. Like Kunal could have won. Marion could have won. Anybody could have won this this season. And it just goes to show you how deep the pool is was uh, this year. Mm. And um, I don't know who decided the casting this year, but it was one of those like, okay, let's just put as many good bakers together as possible and let them fight it out and see what it's like <laughs> gladiator style right <laughs> and let's pull the hardest flipping technicals at them that we can four pages in two and a half hours what the hell is that like really that's <laughs> just evil you know and uh and it was uh but it was a great time um th- all of us have become so so very close and I used to listen, watch these shows, the British show as well. And, you know, they would have these uh, montages at the end where it's like, oh, such and such went to visit such and such and such and such went on vacation with such and such. They're on a cycling oh, tour now. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, and they wrote, you know, they wrote, they, they get on a tandem bicycle and they, they ride down, you know, the lane, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it happened. And say so Vincent uh, now owns a tandem bicycle. It's great. <laughs> I think the bicycle built for ten, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know the thing about it is, is that we met on the ground. We weren't allowed to leave the grounds uh, because of COVID and regulations and things like that for uh, where we were staying, and uh, and that was all fine. So I said to the other bakers after the second day, uh, we had a Zoom meeting, and then the next day I sort of said to them, "Hey, listen." How would you guys like to do a mask to mask meeting on the grassy knoll besides that? <laughs> and they like they were into it. And so um, almost everybody came out. Uh, those people who were able to came out. And we clicked mm. immediately. And from that day on, from that very first meeting to today, mm-hmm. we have not been not in contact. We've been in contact with each other every single day, whether it's by WhatsApp, group chat or by phone, or by visiting. I mean, I was uh, in Montreal this weekend visiting with Canal. Um, I'll be having, you know, I've been up to Steve's place a couple of times. He'll be having dinner here uh, quite soon. I'll be seeing Marion and, and all these people. And I'm just so delighted and happy to have gained um, these wonderful bakers in my life. You know, it's just amazing. And uh, yeah, so that's the best thing that came out of this. The cake plate is great. <laughs> you know, it's such a huge bonus to get like nine other people that you actually care about nobody was you know an idiot is- <laughs> that's a relation wait hold on i i have to qualify that maybe i'm a, i was the idiot so i don't know <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's one of those ones where you know if you like there's there's no stupid people in this group and you're looking around and you're going i can't see any <laughs> oh, mate uh... <laughs> No, maybe just maybe no. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. no, definitely not. Not from us. Like I'm thinking, you know, if you know, because there are a lot of reality shows around, <laughs> and you know, usually the follow ups are things like um, such and such broke up with such and such, and then they were found, you know, sleeping with each other's 
exes and then smashing each other's cars, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> what shows are you watching anyway? I don't know. I'm trying to think of like what insiders and fellow diners would say in those exactly. magazines. Tongues were wagging. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, on the beach. <laughs> yeah, on, oh, God, that's exactly where it would happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Desperate Housewives of Bondi would be <laughs> quite, a, quite a show. But your analogy? <laughs> but my analogy is basically like, you know, after hearing what you guys are saying, I now realise why Canadian don't do um, a little, this is what they've been up to now. Is it to be at least another two shows of just <laughs> listing... <laughs> Here's all the times they've baked together. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Here's all the times I said very nice things. <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's nothing but nice things to say. And, uh, and that's an honest, it's actually very surprising. Um, I'm, sh- I'm shocked because, you know, I can, be, I, can be very, I can be very like, oh, that person, oh, whatever. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm, I'm shook at <laughs> None of them, they were all great. You know, I was probably, you know, the bitchiest one on the <laughs> but that's okay. That's but it's okay. really it's really interesting as well, because as you said, in terms of you know the, the quality going up, I don't think that's a, a thing about comment about any other season. I think that's having this be the fifth one. So people now understand what's required to to hit that standard. Whereas mm. usually when you see first seasons of sort of any form of cooking show, people go on and and sort of, oh look, I've 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 made a, a cake my mother made, and it's like this thing that's falling apart, and it's like, well, but the love is in there. But you get to like season two, season three, season, and it's like everyone sees that quality and goes, I need to be better than that. I need to be better than that. And especially with something like Bake Off, where you've got so many versions around the world that you can go and watch and see the elevation. Um, mm-hmm. You know, British, obviously, Australian, obviously, for us as well, Canadian, all those seasons together. You can watch the, that elevation and go, there's some really cool ideas. I can't just go in with a really basic philosophy. Mm-hmm. I have to have some skills behind me. But do you think, like, there's that, but also lockdowns like you, there's been two years essentially of you know having to do stuff at the home at home has that enhanced your baking at all do you think that's played a part <laughs> no the house is a lot cleaner <laughs> the, basement has, the basement in the garage is like completely organized and my sock drawer and underwear drawers are like amazing <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but as far as baking no i always i did I've always baked a lot, regardless of the lockdown, I would have been baking anyway. So oh, for enough. me, it would have been, it's not a problem. I think that was more true for uh, Karen and Stephen. Mm. Uh, I think they were, yeah, the lockdown sort of like this was their therapy and this sort of got them through some enjoyment and love to spread the love. You know, we all, I think in the heart of it, we all bake for love and, and to share that joy. You there's not a lot of things in this world where you can sort of do or make that would just be like, you give it to someone and they just smile and they just like appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, but baking is one of those things and it could be savory. It could be sweet depending on the person, right? You just have to know the person. And that's been part of, by the way, that joy of that bake along that you've been doing as well on, on Instagram with all the bakers afterwards. That's part of that is that sharing of the, right. Now we're going to take a different brief and do something a bit different. And everyone can sort of send us things in and and you can do this too. And that's sort of been that all encompassing sort of caring love that is baking. Sure. And uh, I think there's another bake along coming up. Oh, hot off the presses. There's another bake along coming up, I think, probably uh, near Christmas. Um, I'm, I'm not involved. <laughs> Guys, it's like, okay, that is for me, that is like months of preparation and design and putting it together. I'm not doing it. Sorry. I got, like I got way too much stuff going on right now, too. It's, to... it's not like people randomly ask you to make a savory shoe. Anyway. Um... <laughs> right. But that was okay. And I was this close to making that, you know, uh, Bacon, bacon, a the bacon, the 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 bacon of booze, bacon of booze. <laughs> yes, I was, yeah, the ba- the bacon of booze. Close. I was a, very close, and I still will do that for you. I still that's a future project. That's a future project. <laughs> so, what are you up to now? <laughs> um, well, I am. Um, I got some things on the go. I'm just doing a lot of baking right now uh, for clients and things like that. A couple of, three weeks ago, I had to post publicly that you know. 
December. If you didn't get your order since December, it's done. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too bad. So uh, sad. See you next year. <laughs> it is. And, uh, you still get people calling and are you are you really done? Or are you just sort of taking a break? It's like, no, I'm so done. I'm so like busy. And I'm taking orders into like, you know, January, February, March now. Wow. Uh, which is great. Um, made no money at it. Oh. But, you know, like baking is one of those things, you know, it's like when you're a, when you're a, uh, a cake maker and you only do like one offs, mm -hmm. it's hard to make money at oh, okay. that. Right. If you can make like six of them and have a, uh, you know, brick and mortar store and people can just come in and just pick up a cake for Tuesday, you know, that's a, you can make some money there. And if you can cheat like somebody in a certain show and just use Rice Krispies for everything and vanilla cake, while your cakes are not going to be good, you'll make a fortune because that's cheap. Um, we won't talk about that. No, we won't. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, I despise that show. Anyway, um, <laughs> look at the amazing cake I made. It's Rice Krispies. It's Rice Krispies, yes. I know, I know. It's you like, simply made cereal. Yeah, you, you made cereal on a sheet cake. Well done. <laughs> People ask me that a million times. It's like, so is that part of your cake? Like, you know, Rice Krispies? It's like, no, no. It's not, not part of any real cake. No, I don't charge you I charge like Rice Krispies for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a nutritious breakfast, yes, but not, not part of the cake. Not that there's anything wrong with Rice Krispies, you know. No, like, no. Uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not scuttling any future um, possible. Um, like Kellogg's, you know, yes. Kellogg, like Kellogg's. Kellogg's around. I love Rice Krispies. No. Yeah, snap, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg's money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg, Kellogg dollar bills, y'all. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I have to ask about some of the bakes, obviously, because we've talked a lot about the experience, but I have to ask about some of the bakes. So now I'm going to start with the one that I'm going to start for all of the bakers with. So for the rest of you listening in, prepare, because Steve got this last week. Sorry, Vincent. Flemington's. <laughs> How do we find them? <laughs> um, it takes a well. I know now that I'm supposed to stick a skewer in it and spin mm. it around, stick it in a token and spin it around. That would have been a lot faster. That would have been a tidbit that I would have really enjoyed having. <laughs> um, but um, I love them to make them because you know they're they're cubed <laughs> and they're perfectly square, sharp edges. <laughs> Your wheelhouse. And it was a funny thing because I was making that everything was going great. The jam and the partially strained jam and everything else was great. And uh, I was putting it all together, is cutting nice straight edges. Everything was perfect, this perfect size. And then it was like, Bakers, you have seven minutes. And I was like, Holy Christ, I got like 20, <laughs> like I got another 10 of these things to think and the last one. <laughs> The last time just took me a half an hour type of thing. So screw it. There's no more pork. There's no more spoon. I'm just slapping on my heart. I'm ducking this stuff in, right? And, you know, and the final, uh, the final you know, result was uh, the judge is saying, this looks like bad, two different batches. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was two different batches. It was like the pre, like non-stressed out, Batch and then they're like, oh my God, I got to get this on the plate patch. I feel like you really embodied then the true journey of, of you know, all the parents who were making lemmingtons late at night for their kids to take to school to like a, a cake sale the next day, um, who are, you know, the first, you know, you know, batch are quite good. And then by about 1 a.m., they're like, fuck, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, just throwing it in there. <laughs> Bam in the skewer. <laughs> No, it's amazing. Like my sister, my sister just made it recently. Um, she 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 called me and she said, "Oh, I got some advice about the lamingtons and blah 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 blah." And I said, "Okay," and I gave her some advice and I said, "You know, make sure you keep a third, like use the coconut in thirds, mm -hmm. and just keep changing it out yep. because yep. otherwise it's gonna get all like it's gonna look like somebody." Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we all went there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah so that's the most important part but uh, i made them again at home and then i it took me about 45 minutes to coat oh probably 36 of them mm. and i'm thinking wow this takes a long time right i'm, I'm meticulous i'm everything is clean they're all perfect 
And then um, Amanda was making them that weekend as well. And it was like, I said to her, oh, you know, just be aware, it takes a long time to cope. Well, 10 minutes later, she's posting them on, on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, how the, what the hell did you do that so fast? Like, and this was going on over and over in the tent because, and you know, the judges even said it to me and everything else, you know, Vince is great. He's got to speed up, got to speed up. You know? And, you know, meanwhile, like Amanda's cracking out, you know, 300 like macarons and I'm just like whacking my pan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's incredible. Like she is a machine. Like that woman is just incredible and so much fun to begin, you know. When you've got the everything. pressure of baking for rabid children, it's like, yeah, okay, no, can you, yes, bake, 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 have it, have it, have it, go away, go away. I kind of like that. It's kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. But it's and, like, uh, it's because it's an unnatural pressure, obviously, having somebody telling you you've only got this long to make the entirety of your bake. Or as I've mentioned before, when Anjali last year mentioned, you know, when was the last time you saw anyone just sit around at home and go, I think I'll make a three tier cake? <laughs> just, that's what I'm going to bake. You don't just sit around baking one. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it's funny you bring that up because uh, the showstopper cake, um, my journey cake, I decided to make it for uh, my the finale. Um, mm. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to make that cake today. And I read, you know, I, okay, if you want to get into like how I wrote my recipes and mm. stuff like that, maybe we can do that. Oh, yes, yes. Because we really do. So we have to, um, I have to give the recipes to the Great Canadian Baking Show. And it's written in, in like how you write in a cookbook here, the ingredients for this portion, the method, ingredients, method, ingredients, method. I submitted those recipes uh, in the format of, um, of a cookbook. And then I would take that recipe and go through it by time, chronologically, mm -hmm. so that all my ingredients are listed as I need them. Mm, and it might be like part of this recipe, ingredients for this recipe is at the top, part of the second part of it's at the bottom somewhere. And then I would have time checks, uh, like, at 45 minutes, um, an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 25 minutes, you know, that sort of stuff. So I know exactly where I was in the tent. Do I need to, do I need to push? Do I need, am I okay to just relax a little bit? And that is just me. I'm just anal retentive, like maniac, because I wanted to take away every single thing that I could control. Mm -hmm. from the tent you know yep. because you have cameras you have lights you have there's other variables <laughs> so many other variables that you're not used to that you don't have at home so you i wanted to take away have all two of that. posts wandering over to go here's something funny or <laughs> can, can i, I steal think? that <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing today how does that make you feel like, oh. <laughs> so um so yeah my recipes are very very uh and i would spend hours and i'm not just talking you know I would write the regular recipe out and it would take me a couple hours. Hmm. And then I look at the clock, it's eight hours later when I finish writing my recipe for the tent. But I felt so prepared going into that tent um, because I just had to run the program, right? I didn't have to think about anything. And then I talked to the other bakers and some of them are like, oh yeah, I never did a run through yet. It's like, <laughs> And that just blows my head off. Like I'm just I'm 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 speechless. Or I just look at them aghast. You know, you can name I'll Steve. It's okay. You can name Steve. No, it's not. I don't know. Steve. Steve worked really hard. Like they all. Everybody worked really hard. But yeah. you know, it was that panic before getting into the tent that mm. um, I never really had that because I already knew that I had my recipes good. Mm. But you know. Um, but the, the baking and yeah, well, this section took me half an hour and this section took me, you know, two hours. So I'm good. Right. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't Roughly, like ballpark, that. ballpark this time. It's great. <laughs> You're just like, what do you mean ballpark? Ballpark? I can't do that. <laughs> but again, it's well, and I can, I can, I would lose my, I would lose my mind. <laughs> but again, it's this whole, you know, different artists and their different methods, you know, um, you know, some people are more like Pollock and you are kind of like more of a, 
I'm trying to think of a good Renaissance painter, um, Titian, you know, you're just very methodical and making sure all the aspects are there and ready to go. So, so you know, it, and, and, you know, both creation creations are amazing. It's just, you know. And it was said, you've mentioned it, Steve mentioned it um, when we spoke to him last week as well, but that individuality of each baker. And I think more than any other season, we saw that with everyone, that everyone had their thing. And everyone had the thing that they were really going to shine at. And everyone had something else that they were not struggling with, but something else that you could see they were learning as they went or they were developing as they went. And you saw development too, mm -hmm. which is the other thing that always is appealing whenever you watch any version of Bake Off is that development of a skill as you move through. So what did you develop? I mean, you said you were, you know, you're boning up on everything. God, can we say boning? Yeah, because I say things like that. You belting. swear all the time. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, what was it? What was the kind of one bake that stood out to you as this is, oh, this is a skill that I've now taken further than I would have? Oh, well, um, many... As, as we moved on along, uh, especially towards the quarterfinals and the semifinals, mm -hmm. that's when things started getting a little tense because um, when we got the briefs, when we got the briefs for the second half of the season and we were developing these recipes um, in the off site, like mm -hmm. not at home anymore, in a, in a hotel that we're not familiar, like, you know, yeah. it's just, you don't have all your stuff, right? And um, when it got to that point, I wasn't really worried too much about it because it's like, yeah, I'm not going to make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you guys, right? And then I was like, oh gosh. I'm Enjoy the final, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no word of a lie. And, uh, and then I started to get closer and closer and I thought, oh crap, I have to make a journey break. <laughs> right? like, how the hell am I going to do that? So to answer your question in a very convoluted way, um, it was the other bakers mm. that it wasn't a skill that I, I necessarily learned from the other bakers, but it was the push mm. from the other bakers because I would be developing a recipe yep. and in the back of my head, I would think, oh crap, <laughs> what is Amy doing? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kick my butt. And I bet like, oh, it's got to be more. It's got to be more. It's got to be more. And then I would think, oh, what's Stephen doing? He's probably developing some ridiculous flavor out of rocks and soil. So I have to figure that one out. Right? It's like, and you know, and, and Steve is, it, it was just like, it just plays on your head because you're kind of like, I got to be better. I just got to be better. And, your skill is paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I don't drink. That's the problem. If I, I drink, need to talk to you about it. because the amount of booze that appeared in your bikes, <laughs> someone who's like, I don't drink. There's a lot of booze in your bikes. I mean, he's just secretly Australian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because every, every year we sort of pay a lot of attention because every year in Bake Off, there's someone who ends up with all the boozy bakes. And you had a fair <laughs> amount of booze in the bake this year. I do it's it's a little odd isn't it i mean um that that final tart uh my mojito tart oh, mojito. it was uh there was a lot of rum in that like <laughs> I was like glug, 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 glug. it was rum and when i said i'm gonna get you hammered i wasn't kidding I was well, you just hit upon like, the solution to bake you want off. booze i'm gonna give you booze. that is the solution to bake off which is get the judges drunk <laughs> that's what's okay. the answer <laughs> it is true it's true and uh but you know i learned a lot uh from that tart um what some of the things that didn't make it on uh, television was like my conversation with kai uh um kyla and bruno and we were sort of just discussing why it only tasted of alcohol and not rum mm. because i did i said there's a lot of rum in that and i discovered chemistry that you know um milk or or um, dairy products may really dampen the flavor of the alcohol like the rum but mm -hmm. the alcohol remains and that's probably what happened and i said to them it's like well i thought 
people who like alcohol just loved alcohol. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they like flavor. That's <laughs> It's alcohol. What's not the way? It's the burning <laughs> sensation, isn't it? That's what they're after, the burning sensation. Isn't that what better. you want? Should I give you a match? <laughs> <laughs> they're like burning and loving everybody around them. They're the two things they're after. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I learned some stuff there, and it's like, okay, that's just not going to work. But we'll see how that goes. And uh, I will I will make that tart again. Um, but I'll probably burn off some of the alcohol prior to that. <laughs> so speaking of alcohol... Like my mum used to make a Christmas cake that she would start soaking the, the dried fruit in alcohol in about October. Um, <laughs> um, you know, because why not ferment it a bit longer? <laughs> Are there any Christmas traditions or, you know, seasonal traditions in your household with the baking? Ah, uh, gee whiz. Um, no, not really. I mean, we have, you know, we have food that we bake, of course. Yeah. Um, my mom makes this, made this turkey uh, mm. every year. And it's her own recipe. I've never had it anywhere else. And um, it was handed down to me and my siblings. But I make it the most. My brother's a chef. So he's like, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to turkey with that. I'm not going to turkey. Right? <laughs> Turn to shit and learn how to do it. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, but I make this turkey now and my sister makes it as well, but um, it is a hoisin and honey glazed turkey. Oh, and I tell you how this thing is made and you will die. Like there is, she makes a raft of potatoes, like, um, like uh, baking potatoes on the bottom mm -hmm. of the tray. Then she puts uh, the turkey that is stuffed with scallions and onions and what have you in in the cavity mm -hmm. then she smothers the whole thing in a hoisin honey sugar pepper um rub and she just slices slathers this whole thing in this 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 sauce and then she cuts um onions in half and cups them all over the turkey so it doesn't like burn all over the place and then she lays um celery on top of that so it just sort of keeps it from burning uh -huh. and halfway through you, you bake it on its back with water now uh in the potatoes just to the top of the potatoes so that the moisture from the water keeps the turkey from being mm. dried out and then halfway through the bake you flip it over so it's breast side down mm. Mm -hmm. and you finish the bake that way and you let it cool with the breast side down so all the juices go into the breast the and it is just, and then she makes gravy out of the drippings from the turkey and what's the hoisin. So you got this hoisin gravy that goes on top of it. It is ridiculous. It's so good. Wait, and, you're on a flight. Um. <laughs> and I, you know, and I love this turkey. And um, so that's my mom's recipe. Oh my and, uh, and I'm so happy to be able to carry that on. For As you my, should be. That sounds incredible. It's incredible. It's not for everybody. I mean, it's a sweet. It's it's a sweet gravy. It's you know. It's no, that sounds like it's for everyone. It sounds to me like it's for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like candy bacon, basically. It's just like who's not going to love candy bacon, right? So, yeah. yeah. I just want to make you know, like the duck pancake, like pancakes, and just like slice it, slice off that turkey, the turkey and just oh. whack it. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, that would be perfect for that. Or you can use it with like do like Chinese lettuce wraps yep. with oh, a little yeah. and a potato and the turkey and just, oh, oh it's crazy. That's a bunch of ideas. That's Sing Choi Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you call it Sing Choi Bao in Canada? I don't know. That's what they call it. But yeah, Sing Choi Bao. That's right. Very good. Yeah. I even understood what you were saying. Oh, oh good. Wow. Even with <laughs> Do you have that Sing Choi Bao <laughs> stuff in that chow, mate? That's nice. <laughs> So before we before we finish up, the the, the, the most formulaic style questions that I ask, but I, I always have to find them out anyway. Yes. Two bakes, the one that you enjoyed the most that you didn't expect to, and the one that you never want to see again as long as you live. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, well, the one that surprised me the most, well, there's actually a sort of a tie between the two of them. Um, was the mosaic cookie mm -hmm. and the hand-raised pies. They were both like, 
Mm. I dreaded the mosaic cookie like you wouldn't believe. My first iteration of design for that that cookie yeah. was over 200 pieces. <laughs> and I, because you know, in my brain, I hear a mosaic. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this has got to go back to Rome. So <laughs> when we've got a designer, so the designer's going, it's got to be a proper mosaic. And then I'm thinking you're going, now to add an extra dimension, we're going to put a layer of like, you know, like um, a, a chocolate soil over it so they can archaeological dig their way to the mosaic. <laughs> I've got the statues around the outside and there's a fountain in the middle. And <laughs> well, yeah, no, the, the, original, the original design for that was like two koi that were side by side sort of intertwined. Oh. And then I had lily pads and lilies and and, the palm and and it was just like I look at this. I had a I had a nervous breakdown because I thought two and a half hours. What in the hell? How is this even possible? And then I have to keep track of all these stupid things. What do I do? Number them? Like what do you do? <laughs> so uh, so anyway. numbering the last piece and you're like time up. <laughs> <laughs> lily pad Which number ninety nine. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I mean, you you go into this thing and you just sort of go wow. You know, and I finally just, you know, pared it down <laughs> and did something that I could actually finish. And in terms of the, the hand-raised pies, I never expected it to be that tasty. Like the, the crust, the hot water crust, I thought this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And it was good, man. Like mm -hmm. I'm making that again. And um, so those are the two top ones for me. Um, in terms of what I will never make again, well, so many. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmingtons, no. <laughs> well, Lemmingtons are fine. I think, I think those pirouettes. You can forget. I'm never making those again. <laughs> Everyone so far has gone pirouettes. <laughs> yeah, those pirouettes were just evil. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the pirouettes. Out of all of the things that we had to make, I enjoyed almost everything. Um, I didn't hate anything. Uh, some of the things were very challenging, um, for sure. But uh, yeah, those pirouettes—they're just—they're made by machines, man. Like, just yeah. let machines do that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, look, that, that's one area where we're happy with the rise of the machines. Okay, <laughs> but some areas, no. But they don't have, they don't have fingers face. that burn off, and you don't have, you know. You, you I like. Your... I like having fingers and fingerprints. Exactly. And... <laughs> fingerprints not overrated um, i want to be able to like turn on my iphone it's nice so. <laughs> it, does, it does help you how am i going to make this purchase through paypal if i cannot hit the <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i don't remember my damn code what are you talking about <laughs> It's, it's like just before we finish up, it's like the, ran the randomness where, where iPhone and Apple move to the, the facial recognition just in time for all of us to have to wear masks. Um, <laughs> like, open your phone. Oh, now I've got to type a code in. <laughs> just move to facial recognition and now you don't know who I am. Oh, and oh my God, Christy, your rant. Your rant is the, was the best thing I have heard in so long. I thought, oh my God, she's going to freak out about tea, man. Like, what? <laughs> I, I, that I was think... the best rant I've ever heard. That was so good. <laughs> it had been building up, you know, like you know, I've got the emotional, like, like baggage of my mother and, and that tea. So, you know, like it's, it's long-term trauma. And then <laughs> during the day, I... I'd read these things like on, on Facebook groups about people trying to make tea who just didn't know how. I'm like, you can't fucking do that. I'm not in a microwave. You gotta just get a kettle. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I shared yeah. with you. There's a, there was a post going around on Facebook with people on Reddit discovering how you make tea. Yeah. And it was involving people just suggesting they put the mug loosely on the hob, for example, <laughs> or, you know, that tea was, oh, someone, someone said, Oh, I've, I I didn't realize that tea was this good hot. And someone said, "You've been making it cold," oh. and that was the starting point of this thing that just got more and more crazy by the moment. And then that night, we watched that. And look, I understand now. Steve was, you know, infusing milk, and that's fine. Know. You know, I can, I, I've healed that part of it. But it's still you two just... reconciled last week. We it was a, it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, you know, Canadian. Would you not, would you not make like chai in milk? Yeah. Yes, but I don't usually make my own chai. I like because I can't do it very well. But chai is well, different because it's spices. You know, it's not like loose tea leaves and stuff. And I'm just the loose, the loose tea leaves just mess with it. And that was oh man, that was, was just 
That was the best. How do you think I felt? <laughs> I was watching it. <laughs> like, I, this woman and where did she come from? So again, slightly pulling back, pulling back the curtain a little bit on on the record while we're recording. If if one of us goes on the rant, the other tends to sort of lean back a little bit just to give them the space to have the rant. And I said, did not know this was coming. Had no clue. I didn't know it was coming. It started. And as it started, I started to lean back. And by the end, I was almost laying down flat. (laughs) Partly because I'm keeping away from the microphone, but partly because I am laughing so hard that I'm trying to not overdo the audio that Christy's laying down. So I'm almost laying with my face in a pillow, laughing. Also worried about my wife having a breakdown over tea, (laughs) but mostly laughing. (laughs) Well, the, that was classic. It was like so perfect that your timing on that was so great because you came back on, Chris, and just went, okay, then, move it <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm used to it, but, you know, we, 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 this isn't our first rodeo. So. Oh, God, that was just the best. <laughs> so I'll be unpacking that next year with my therapist. Um, <laughs> T-based trauma. T-based trauma. Um, it's, it's a new industry and, and it's a boom industry, quite frankly. P-T-S-D. Oh man! Oh no, you didn't. PTSD. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I think we need. I think we need to leave Vincent there before we <laughs> before we splatter him with our mess. So, thank you so much, Vincent. This has been an absolute delight to get to talk to you. Congratulations again on the on the. Hey, thank you so much. It's been a, a real pleasure to finally see you guys and and hear your voices. I love the show, and uh, I'm so glad I was turned on to it, and I'm so glad I kept on listening to it because it got better and better. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, worth it. so we will be back in the very near future with mm-hmm. some more podcasts. But until then, I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we will catch you all later. Winner, winner, delicious turkey hoisin and honey dinner. <laughs>